Bride of Higara. This is Captain Soban of the fleet, Farron Shah. Looks like you could use a hand. Attention all Sobani, pick your targets and engage. Hello everyone, hello hello, this is Captain Soban. Welcome aboard the Starship and Norma Prize for our first episode of Star Sector. Okay, so for those of you that don't know what this game is, it's kind of a little bit of everything. There's open galaxy exploration, there's um, trading you can do, you can colonize planets and build uh, stations on them, um, you can d build up a fleet and go to war with other factions. There's so much you can do in this game. It's it's really, really cool. It's kind of... I, I kind of think of it a little bit as like Skyrim, where like in Skyrim, you know, you're in a, a giant open world where you can do whatever you want. You can get quests and run dungeons, but honestly, it's there's no nothing that ties you together to um, what you want to do. This game's kind of the same way. You, it's kind of more sandboxy, so you can kind of do whatever you want. There is a storyline you can follow, but it's not required to follow. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and get into the game. I haven't actually played this game in quite some time, but I have known about it, and I've been wanting to do a series on it for a while, so hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoy it. All right, so uh, first off, let's pick our character. Who do we want to be? Who looks like Captain Sobon in space? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. So many portraits to choose from. Who do I want to be? Want to be the very best? But none of these guys look like their very best. I guess we'll go up here. He kind of looks like he's a captain. And sector age will keep mix. This will keep all the ages of the um, planets and everything um, different. Sector size will go normal. And we're not going to go Iron Man mode because, again, it's I haven't played this in a really long time. And I'm sure things have changed. And I don't want to risk uh, uh, losing our entire fleet due to some sort of carelessness that I wasn't aware of. And of course, my name's going to be Captain Soban. I'm the only captain there ever was. Hey, so we start off with 2,000 credits. Our most recent occupation was, this is the background of our character, and this will determine um, what kind of fleet we start out with and what kind of um, perks our character gets. So we were a bounty hunter commissioning a wolf class frigate. So this will give you a, a um, wolf class frigate, which is a, a heavily um, offensive focused uh, and speed focused frigate, if, if I remember. Your scavenger commanding a Wayfury class combat freighter. So if we get a ship that has a lot of cargo capacity with some combat capability. Explorer leading a salvage expedition from onboard an Apongi class cruiser. That's a faster start. So we get a, a large cruiser class that we start out with. Mercenary leading a small force form from Abroad, a Hammerhead class destroyer. Again, another f faster start. Freelancer doing whatever jobs you've been able to find. And this is just a randomized start. So you start with a random assemble of ships. Uh, let's say we were a scavenger. We're going to scavenger so we can get a combat freighter. In addition, our fleet include, includes a kite class shuttle under the command of an experienced subordinate, or a shepherd class drone tender with a cargo of heavy machinery. Ooh, I like the idea of having a um, a drone um, carrier escort. So let's go with that. So we get uh, a shepherd class drone tender, and we get 20 heavy machinery. Select the campaign difficulty. Easy as recommend for a first time player. Um, we're going to go normal because um, I have played this before. I This is one of those games you don't actually beat. It's a sandbox game. Um, but I do have an experience because I've also seen other YouTube videos on the game. So, And I enjoy a challenge. So let's, let's go normal. And, doo -doo -doo. and then should we do the tutorial? Yeah, we might as well start with the tutorial. Because I have, like I said, I have played, but I don't think any of you guys have ever actually seen those games. So, let's do it. Generating game. Alright, we are in the game. And this is what we have. We have six combat drones with a drone tender that protects them and, and keeps them alive. 
and we have our combat freighter. Welcome to the sector. Your fleet is in the middle of nowhere and critically low on supplies. Oh, that's always good to start out with. If you don't acquire more supplies, your fleet will suffer through a slow but ultimately uh, uh, fatal decline. I thought it was fail. <laughs> so it confused me for a moment. You decide to continue. That sounds like something good to do. Fortunately, there's a debris field nearby. Move up into it and activate your scavenge ability. Um, yeah, scavenge. I always think I'm saying scab. Like, you know, those, those uh, like things you get on your arms after you, like, after you bleed for a while and it, and it all dries up. I always think scavenge is that. I don't know why. I have a weird brain. Ability to search it for useful cargo. Scavenging requires heavy machinery, but there are some in your cargo holds. You gain the ability to scavenge things. Make sure to take all the supplies and any other valuable cargo, but feel free to leave the cheap and bulky metals behind. Get your fleet moving, click on an empty space in the direction you want to move. Alright. So we have a debris field up here. Let's go ahead and move our fleet up there. Okay, and then we use the scavenge ability. Your fleet assumes a stable orbit relative to the debris field. The field appears stable and will not drift apart anytime soon. Good to know. Long range scans indicate it's possible something of value could be found inside. The, the salvage that remains is extremely difficult to get and there's high risk involved in running a salvage operation. Okay. Let's try this baby out. So scavenging effectiveness is 10% because we're probably not really good at it. Um, requires 61 crew and 30 heavy machinery to operate. Base effectiveness is 25, and this is all based off of like the difficulty of the actual scavenging. So heavy machinery available, 75%. Scavenging skill zero, because we don't really know how to do our stuff. Uh, Fleet-wide scavenge capability. This is like all the ships that have the ability to scavenge. The higher, the more of them you have, the higher bonus you get for this. Crew available times 76, debris field density times 0.12. So this is how, again, this is all, um, some areas, like after a huge battle, you'll find they have very dense, um, scavenging fields. So this is a very, very thin scavenging field, so we're probably not going to find much, but it's a tutorial, so, um, yeah. Anyways, the density of the debris field affects both the amount of resources and the number of rare items found. Alrighty, let's begin operations. Accident during the operation has resulted in the loss of one crew, so one person died and we lost seven heavy machinery. But in return, we got 11, so we got a, a net positive on the machinery we have. Uh, we got a few pieces of metal, we got some fuel, and we got some supplies. I guess I should explain this stuff before we go even further. I'm sure the tutorial will explain it, but I'll go ahead and explain it while I'm thinking about it. So in this game, we have three um, main uh, resources, I guess you could say. Actually, four, technically. Actually, all of these are important resources. Uh, start off the top, this is our available credits. This is how much money our fleet has. We can use it to buy stuff and use it to sell things. This is supplies, which is used to um, keep your your uh, fleet maintained. You run out of supplies, they'll start taking damage over time and eventually explode if they don't get repairs. So do keep in mind that you do need supplies to move around. This is the amount of crew that's available. Um, the first one is how many we have. 40 is how much we require to keep our fleet operational. If this goes below um, the the minimum, then you'll start getting penalties on your abilities and your um, your combat skills because you don't have enough crew to run the entire ship. And I believe, no, I don't think the ship will take damage because that's, uh, that's related to supplies. This is how many marines we have available. If we get ships that, um, that are like troop transports, we can fill them up with marines and use them to take over enemy ships. Really cool. This is our total cargo capacity. We're using 33 of 250. We have a huge cargo capacity because one of our ships is a cargo hauler, so we can hold a whole lot of cargo. Um, this is our this is our uh, crew capacity. We we can hold up to 80 on our ships, and we currently have up to 60. I believe we have to give these guys um, supplies. 
I don't quite remember. But we had to do something with crude in order to keep them alive. I think it's supplies because they require oxygen and stuff to live. And all of that is just built into this um, one right here. And then this one is fuel, which we use to um, go into... I think it's a warp. I think we use warp as our FTL in this system. And the more fuel we have, the further we can go before we have to exit a warp. And um, the larger fleet we have, the more fuel it's going to require to put the entire fleet into warp. So that is very important. Uh, this is our current speed, how fast we can move on the map. This is our current fleet combat readiness, which is how ready our crew are for battle. The higher this is, um, the better we are in combat. When we go into combat, this will slowly um, drop over time. So the longer combat lasts, the um, the more worn out our crew will be, which means they'll start making mistakes or they won't use the engines or what um, as well in combat. So this is this is a very important metric when deciding if we should fight something. This is our sensor range, how far away um, people can see us, um, or like AI and the ships moving around can see us, how well, um, no wait, this is how well we can see them. And this is our stealth rating, which is how well they can see us. So right now we're about even because yeah, we just started. And then this over here is our whole integrity of the entire fleet. And this is our current fleet ride repairs going on. I believe this will tell us how long it'll take for the fleet to get fully repaired. And it takes supplies to repair the fleet. We can get repaired at shipyards or we can do some basic repairs out in the field whenever things aren't going on. That's enough talking about that. Let's get into the game. <laughs> but I, I kind of want to go over that while it was all there. So we got 22 supplies. Fantastic. That'll help keep our crew going for a while. Some fuel so we can go into hyperspace. Or jump. I'm probably going to be saying that a lot because hyperspace is usually the FTL that my brain defaults to. Got some more heavy machinery and we got a little bit of metal. This doesn't sell for much, but it's something because we just started. Okay. Confirm and continue. Now, is there anything else? There is more up here. Oop, that's not what I wanted. Mm. Oh, apparently that's what we we're supposed to do. Now we're quick saving to get the, then get the tutorial going to the next one. Pirate fleet is approaching. First, you'll shoot at. You'll, first you'll spot it as a sensor contact and as, a, as an unidentified fleet and then when it gets very close you'll see its true colors. So that's where the sensor stuff comes in handy. We can see things from very far away we have very good sensors and then as they approach we get more and more details about them. Don't worry the pirate ship is a shabby rust bucket and if you lose you can just press F90 reload which is why they had you pick a save to advance the tutorial. Even so, combat can be expensive, especially if there's no bounty on the enemy you fight. Deploying ships into battle re reduces their combat readiness, and reducing and recovering CR consumes supplies, which is combat readiness, because the fleet are relaxing, they're like um, watching TV or um, like eating meals and whatnot to recover from the last combat, so it requires supplies to get their combat readiness back up to where it's supposed to be. Battle damage can cost even more supplies to repair. Yep. However, fighting is often necessary to survive, wait for the pirate fleet to approach, and then defeat them. Okay, we will do that. Here they come, there's the unidentified signature, and here they come. Is one rogue miner, Stop. standard combat fig uh, freighter. We are a custom, and we have a custom drone tender. The pirate ship maneuvers to prevent you from disengaging easily. It does not appear to be a certain of your identity, and any hostilities will have a reduced impact on your reputation. Um, should we try and talk to him? Uh, open a comm link. It should have sent. Uh, the pirate ship maneuvers to prevent you from disengaging easily. It does not appear to be certain of your identity. Oh, that, I already read that. Okay, open a comm link. They should have sent the real navy, not some grounder leaking in their vac suit. Oh, okay. So he's just threatening us. All right, let's attack him. Enemy fleet pursues your forces. Engage, engage. Okay, and this is where we can select what units we want to use in the in the uh, combat, since we only have two units. 
Uh, no, this is to select the flagship, which is the ship that I'm going to be controlling. And I want my ship. And then we will be using... Yeah, and this one over here is AI controlled. Okay, let's move into combat. So this game, like the combat, kind of reminds me of RTS. Or not RTS, um, I don't know why I just said real-time strategy. Uh, Sword of the Stars of how the combat works because we are in kind of a time limit because the further longer we stay in battle the uh, the worse our combat readiness gets and it, it ends once we um, defeat the enemy or if the enemy defeats us 500 400 here we are wait you're not the enemy where is the enemy Oh god, there they <laughs> Oh yeah, there we go. Shields! Keep the shields up. It's been a while since I played. So in combat, we generate flux um, as our shields take damage. We have our flux, and then also as we use our, our, um, our weapons. Flex fills up all the way, we overload our, our ship, and we can't use it for a while. There we go. Hey, sweet. He has been destroyed. We took a bunch of damage. So that's not too good. But hey, I'm still learning. <laughs> Okay, so preliminary results indicate three crew and no marines were lost during the last engagement because we kind of took a lot of damage. We lost 10% combat readiness, I think, and 20% on you. Your forces were able to turn the tables in the pursuing enemy and crush them ultimately. So we lost reputation with the pirates, which is fine. Um, you can get good reputation with the pirates and eventually join them. Scavenge crews are able to recover 358 credits from CPU cores still active in the wreckage. Sweet! So, and here's some of the supplies from the wreckage. Boop. More metal, and then we got a couple weapons. Nice. Hey, your fleet supply consumption has just gone up. Recovering combat readiness uses to deploy ships in the battle cost supplies as does repairing battle damage. Your supply use, repair, and C CR recovers. Recovery on ships can be suspended from the fleet screen. So you can actually halt how much uh, combat readiness and stuff that, uh, um, that uh, you're using if you want to save it for other things. Cool. Not show me this again. Cool. That's how we pause. And as you can see, our combat readiness now is 58%, and it's going to take four days for our ship to get fully repaired. And we're consuming 5.5 supplies a day to increase our combat readiness and repair our ship. All right. Go ahead and quick save. Get to the next part of the tutorial. So you gain one skill point for every level up. Oh, our, our character must have leveled up in that combat. Indeed. An additional point at the start of the campaign. You also gain story points as you gain experience. They can be used for to take exceptional actions to make your own story in a way. So these are like actions that will drastically change um, the outcome. Or if it's like a very particularly hard battle, you can spend one of these to avoid the battle. All right. Skill points are used to learn skills. Skills are arranged into four aptitudes, combat, leadership, technology, and industry. For each aptitude has a number of tiers. You advance to the higher tiers by picking skills from the lower ones. Makes sense to me. Skills that affect your pilot ship, all combat skills, and a few skills and other aptitudes can be made elite on the cost of a story point. There's 15 levels total. Okay, C to open up the character. Boop, boop. So here are all of our skills. We have two skill points we can use, and we have four story points. 
which means we can turn some of these elite. So now I need to figure out what kind of character I want to be. I want to focus on economy. Leadership is important. Leadership allows us to build a larger fleet. Technology is cool because of all the research stuff that you get. But let's see. I think we can use. Yeah, we can. We can get any one of these for combat. So we got helmsman. Uh, it stings when you push the mix just right. Like, like humming. <laughs> Everything is right in the world from the stars down to your bones. Coming off a shift, it's like I just woke up. <laughs> Words can't tell it. So this affects the ship that my character controls, increase the maneuverability and top speed. All right, what's this one do? It's through cal calamity, the fourteenth endured through hegemony, the uh, eh, dom domain endures. I couldn't say that word. Through du duty, humanity shall endure. Words are hard, man. This increases our pilot sheet, pilot ships. Maximum. Ugh, cannot talk right now. Please. <laughs> this increases our maximum um, operating time by 60 seconds. There's a certain amount of time that every ship has before it starts losing um, uh, combat readiness. So, and also, combat readiness to de degradation rate is reduced by 25%, and we have plus 15% maximum combat readiness for this for the ship. Cool. Uh, what else do we have? Armor damage reduction. Uh, weapon and engine damage reduction taken. And this allows us to put heavy armor. Nice. We're combat freighter, so we're not going to be a um, a main ship that does a whole bunch of damage. Negative 15% damage taken by shields. Negative 25% flux generated by active phase cloak. Oh, we don't have cloaking. Plus 50 damage to fighters. We're not a carrier. Plus 10 damage to destroyers, cruisers, and capital ships. Ooh. We might get the first one. Improve maneuverability on top speed. This will allow us to get out of the way of an enemy and run away if we need to. But let's see what else we have. For leadership, we have plus 5% weapon damage for combat ships. Maximum of 250 for total combat ship deployment cost. Cool, cool. Plus 6% to nav rating. I believe these are fleet um, upgrades. Frigates destroyers and officers, including flagship, plus 20% damage to ships larger than frigates if frigate, plus 10% damage to capital ships and cruisers if destroyer. Okay, it's a damage bonus. Plus 15% maximum combat readiness for combat ships. Speed. It's 50% faster fighter repl replenishment rate. That actually isn't too bad because we have a we have a drone. We might go heavy drone. I'm thinking about it. Maybe get like two or three ships that are just drone focused. So maximum at eight or less fighter bays and fleet. Your fleet has one fighter bay. So this effect can last for a long time. Effect increased by 1.5 times for ships with officers, including flagship. Indeed. And we have fighter uplink, negative 50% crew loss due to fighter losses in combat, plus 20% top speed, and plus 50% target leading accuracy. That's for all fighters. I think we're gonna go with that one. And then, um, let's see what else we have. Navigation. Make a 30% terrain movement penalty for all applicable terrain. This is when we are landing on planets and doing missions. Uh, we also get plus one burn level, which means we can move faster. Mm -hmm -hmm. Let's see, plus 50% cargo bay capacity, 50% fuel capacity, and 50% personnel fat capacity. We are going to be a, I think we're going to be a drone focused cargo fleet. So this 
wouldn't be a bad one to get for us. Because this affects everything, including my ship. Let's get that. Okay. I want to exit. Oh, and here's where our fleet is. We can take a closer look at our fleet and its details. This is the refit screen. This allows us to take a closer look and adjust things, which I'll talk more about this when we actually start doing that. Crew and cargo area. And here's the map, which I was trying to access before. Here's the system we're in. And this is the entire sector of the map. Pretty big. We are in the Galatea sector. And Intel is where we can see all of our active missions and whatnot. And Command is everything that we currently have under our command. Control two colonies right now. Dude. Okay. So I think the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out... Um, map is tab. I keep thinking it's M. I've been playing Homeworld way too much. Where are we? I think the next thing we need to do is go to the Academy Station. We're down here. Okay. Yep. Shortly after dispatching the pirates, we receive a tight beam communication from the system's main inhabited world, Acadia, or at As Asira. And Sira. I am so bad with names. The message is brief and asks you to travel through and contact station that commander Fo Phobos as soon as possible. I only know that because that's from a D and D campaign I've been watching. <laughs> Uh, let's lay in a course for Acadia. You don't need to do this to travel, but it helps to keep track of where you're, you're going and how long it takes to get there. After dismissing this dialogue, press E to open the Intel screen, view the details of the message you selected, then select the message and click on Show Map button to open the map and directly on Acadia. Then I'll left click and hold on the planet and select Lay in Course, which I did it a different way because I do remember how to do navigation. But the way they want us to do is if we go here, go to Intel, go here, um, hit show on map, and then hit that, right click it, and it'll lay a course for us. So let's go ahead and go to Arcadia. Arcadia is pretty far away, I mean, it'll take a while to get there at this rate. The Sustained Burn ability is useful for long distance travel. Activating will briefly stop the fleet and reduce its acceleration to a minimum. Maximum burn level will be a much higher. Sustained Burn can be interrupted by other fleets, activating an interdiction pulse. So this is basically cruise control. You can hold shift to speed up time. So, Sustained Burns. Thank you. I know we're running low on supplies. I didn't do my fight right. Now we get a really long tail. This doubles, I believe, our maximum speed. Asteroid belt. If you go through at full speed, there's a chance your fleet may be knocked off course, and some of your ships might even suffer damage from asteroid impacts. Slow moving fleet avoids the danger. Press S to hold mo to move slowly until you move through the asteroid belt. Yeah, you can actually take a lot of damage from the asteroids if you're going really fast. Danger is low, however, especially since the belt is thin and you're only going across it. So you couldn't always just uh, get away just by going full speed. No, I'm not that type of person. Oh, God. Slow down. Go through slowly. Yeah. We can go back up to full speed. Start making our way to Arcadia. Hey, hey, repairs are complete on the main ship. Nice. Your fleet is getting closer to Arcadia, which is controlled by the um, hegemi, hegemon, Hegemoni, a major militaristic fast faction in the sector. While the Hegemoni space, a fleet is required by law to identify itself by keeping its transponder turned on. This is a, a view shared by most, though not all, major factions. Okay. Turning on the transponder makes your fleet highly visible, and everyone seeing it will know who you are. 
unlike that pirate fleet you found earlier, which had to be a very close to a positively identify. So this basically just tells the entire sector, hey, this is me, this is my identity, please don't kill me. Keep you, keeping your transponder on and a crippling, is a crippling disadvantage in hostile space, but as we are getting closer to port and you'll like, you will like to dock there, there's, this is a good idea to turn it on. Activating the transponder before getting close to Arcadia, both to avoid unwanted attention from patrols and to receive docking clearance. Since turning it on and off has major consequences, it requires a double tap to turn on and off, once to prime, and once more to confirm. Indeed. So the transponder... Oop! Oop! Transponder is now on. Sweet. Let's go ahead... Woohoo, we got close to the sun. Here we are! Arcadia. Fleet approaches Arcadia Orbital Facility. There's a lot of reading in this game, by the way. <laughs> in case you guys haven't noticed. It's very text-heavy, which is fine. I enjoy text-heavy games, as long as there's a good storyline and a good thing to it. Your fleet transmits identi identification codes via the transponder, and you're... Uh, and you are soon granted docking clearance. Eee. So, uh, let's see. We can consider our military options if we want to try and take over the station, which you could totally do if you want to. And here is Joyce Phobos, the station commander. Fleet operates Arcadia Orbital Facility. Your fleet transmits identification. Oh yeah, I already read that. Um, you can't. You connect to the local comms directly and browse the public and otherwise known listings. Transmit the comms ID and wait for the system to establish a connection. Establish link battlefield control. Stand by. Your connection request is accepted surprisingly quickly, given that a civilian has many a citizen has many responsibilities. Ah! You've come. Excellent. As you're well aware recently, well, I suppose we can skip this part. Uh, let's see. Could use a refresher. Hmm. Yeah, might as well. Give me a refresher. I have no idea what's going on. Team from the Gallica Academy has been running experiments on the dormant gate in the system, trying to connect it back to the domain's gate network. Oh yeah, that. I'm starting to remember the storyline of this a little bit. Um. I believe there was like an AI takeover and because the, in this in this universe everything was hooked up by these large gates all of these uh, sectors of the galaxy and there was like some sort of AI takeover and they had to shut off the um, um, the sector in order to uh, prevent the AI from taking over this sector so I think our sector is the only one that's actually not controlled by AI <laughs> I may need a refresher on that, but I believe that's where the storyline was going. Promising experiments, or so they thought, until an energy pulse we expected would get a response from the gate destabilized the jump points leading into the system, cutting us off from the rest of the sector. Energy pulse we expected would get a response from the gate. It's rather like how the sector is cut off in the domain, right, Small? The stars has a sense of irony, do they not? Maybe I don't know what's going on. Maybe that's what my headcanon was. The miners of Dirikiru Station, which is also located in the system and was operating near a subspace substance level, were hit the hardest. They turned to piracy, intercepting one of the last food shipments to come in, out of desperation, no doubt. But there were deaths, and they they put themselves well outside the law. Yeah, desperation makes them interesting people. Their leaders know that if the jump points are stabilized and the system is once again part of the sector, they can look forward to a life sentence as a as a penal um, colony at absolute best. Most likely, honestly, if they've done something that horrendous, just just get rid of them. There's no reason to give them a life sentence because they're not going to do anything. All they're going to do is just spend 
20, 30, 40 years figuring out how the system works and getting and then uh, finding a way to get out of it. And then you just have to do this all over again. All right. Now where do I fit in? The miners turned pirate are guarding the jump points, preventing us from gathering recent um, readings and coming up with a way to stabilize them. We do have a security detachment that could handle their forces, but they're tied up defending our, um, and, and Sria. <laughs> this entire series is just going to be butchering all of these amazing names. The pirates are too much for you to take on, but but fortunately you don't have to. We've got an agent on, on Durakyu Station who was able to gain access to recent sensor readings from the ship guarding the jump points, but they have not been able to get to a long range comm array to send the data to us. That's where you come in. Head to Durakyu and, and retrieve the data from our agent, then return here. Why me? Why am I the chosen one? Why not? Not exactly spoiled for choice, and you've shown some ability to handle difficulties. I stopped a pirate. I forgot to activate my shields and almost lost my own ship. Are you sure I'm the man for this job? It's not going to be a milk run, that's for sure. Alright, so we got some improvement with the hege hegemony and Joyce for relationships. Alright. What's the plan? First off, make sure to turn off your transponder once you undock. I've instructed the security de department not to give you any trouble about that. Alright, thanks for the backup. If you're lucky, the pirates may even think you're one of their own and let you approach the rock you without any trouble. Still, it makes sense to go dark as you get closer and make sure that they can't get too good of a reading on your fleet. You can also approach along the asteroid belt. They'll give you They'll give you almost perfect cover as long as you're moving slowly. Okay, good to know. And what do I do if they notice me? Then you're in trouble. Activate emergency burn to get out of there, lose them, and then come back and try again. Don't e-burn unless you really need to, though it's hard on the ships and will cost you more supplies to recover from. Eats up a good chunk of fuel too. Okay, so e-burn uses your fuel from for, uh, jumping between sectors. Good to know. Very well. Excellent. Thank you for being willing to help. I didn't really have a choice. You kind of forced me. Come back when you got the data. Good luck. Okay. Um, let's do a little bit of trading. How much does this sell for? 12. Now give me 150. Do have a couple weapons. Hang on. Let's check to see what kind of weapons we can make. Or, um, what we can put on our, our ship. Light duel, light assault, an ion cannon. Oh my. Damage versus shields. This is damage versus hull. We have just a couple of very basic Vulcan cannons as point defense in the back. Anti shield, anti armor. We have a little bit of everything. We don't really have a focus. Hmm. Okay. So how much heat do we generate? 394 and we dis dissipate 250 uh, passively. Okay. We have 3,200 flux capacity. Is there anything new that we can add in? Blast doors. Hmm. I don't think there's any attachments or whatnot that we can add in. I'm looking to add in. I still gotta get used to the ship before I actually start modifying it. Okay, um, what about my drone? How are you doing? We have a salamander or um, missile launcher. That's cool. <laughs> you have a Vulcan point defense system. And then you have these guys, the Borer drones. 
slow and not very sturdy, the combat modified mining drone is non nonetheless capable of keeping hostiles off its mothership for a time. Field and Fielded in numbers, it can even present a credible threat to small combat ships. Okay. So our combat capability in our fleet is really, really lacking. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. Don't think there's... Any, like, is there any ships available? Do, do, do. Oh, that's just a bar. My bad. I don't think there's actually an area where we can buy ships here. I think it's just, it's just a station. Okay, so let's go ahead and sell these. Um, a light assault cannon. Yeah, let's just go ahead and sell our weapons, just for the extra money. And then we need some of these. Like, I don't want all of them. Hey! Give me... Oh boy. Okay, never mind. We need supplies, but they are extremely expensive here because they are short on supplies. Because each one of these um, stations has their own economy, if I remember. We go here, you see all the uh, the stuff going on on the planet. All of the industry and everything. And do do do. Stability of the planet. Yeah, its planets can riot and whatnot. The fleet strength of the planet. Defenses of the planet. The current amount of population and the conditions on it. A lot of really cool things. Really cool things indeed. Okay. Let's go ahead and see if we can take care of these pirates. See if we can do a little bit of negotiation. Ciao. The asteroid belt that they're talking about is this one over here. Refield it. Let's go see what we have around here. Alright, it appears stable. Indicate that it's likely something of value would come here. Indeed. And uh, maybe even there's significant risk involved. It's not dangerous, so that's good. So let's uh, assess it. Boy, there's a very high amount of uh, debris here. Should have bought more crew. I don't know why I didn't. We have a penalty because um, we don't have enough crew available. But it's very dense, so it's going to make up for it. There's 44% effectiveness that we can get things. Didn't lose anything this time. Gain a lot of metal, which we can sell for some money. Um, some more heavy machinery, a lot of fuel, and supplies. Nice, I actually need supplies. Need to probably scavenge this entire area. There's three spots? Or was it? Did we get the entire area? We did. Alright. Good to know. Another debris field up there. Probably gonna make our way down here and follow the asteroids all the way up. Or we could just go up straight. Yeah, we'll go up straight and then follow the asteroids over. Head and up our transponder. And negotiate with some of these uh, pirates. Slow down. And now our detective rating is 98. Because <laughs> we're in the asteroid field. Alright, we are arriving. We 
<laughs> we made it to the station. Go in orbit around the station. Local port authorities seem to take no issue if you are exp your explanation for why your transponder regrettably can't be turned on. Because hmm? we're in a pirate sector. Uh, open comms. This is the guy we're supposed to talk to. See what we can do. Fleet approaches Dairy Coods mining. Oh yeah, that's all right. I always forget that this uh, stays up. It just goes down as you talk more and more. Open the comm directory. You connect to the local comm directory and browse the public and otherwise known listings. Transmit the comm's ID and wait for the system to establish a connection. Establishing battlefield control. Stand by. You contact the agent using a special comms ID and in exchange passphrases to verify each other's identities. The agent then transmits a data file of recent raw sensor readings or the unstable jump points. Hey! And we cut. That's all we needed, I think. Yep, because now he's no longer there. He was the secret agent that we were supposed to talk to. Uh, we, we can do trading with pirates. Those are still very expensive. How cheap are your units? Buy some pirates. They'll help our scavenge operations. Also, how much money are you going to give me for this? 472? I need it. We, uh, we're just starting out, so we need all the money we can get. I don't really need all that in my cargo bay. So give me that. And then give me some crew. Four will bring me back up to where I was. Um, yeah. Let's stick with 60 for now. Well, if we grab more, then we'll have a crew ready for when we start expanding our fleet. So, grab 10. Only cost 119. Yeah, buying pirates. Why not? Now we have 70 crew. Now let's go ahead and leave. Make our way this way. And once we get far enough away from that station, we will make our way back to the main station. No! No! Hit the wrong button. I accidentally did an emergency burn. I didn't want to. I wanted to use a sustain burn. Oh well. <laughs> Wasted some supplies. It happens. Oh, that's a fleet. I don't want to talk to the fleet. I'll talk to the station. Alright. Open up a comm link. Rejoice. Do 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 establishing connection. You have the data. Well done. There's a brief wait for your trans you transmit the file. Now, while the station is running a preliminary analysis of the data, I believe you do you're due a reward. Hey, we gained 5,000 credits. Nice. There's a chime in the background and she looks concerned. We gained two reputation with the faction and four reputations with her. Is there a problem? Yes, the system estimates it takes about a cycle to analyze the data and come up with a stabilization algorithm. A cycle, I think it's like a year. Naturally, by then, the data would be out of date and any algorithm based on it, meaningless. Hook up more computers to it. If we hook up like four computers to the the algorithm, um, wouldn't that just reduce it by four times? No, oh, just an idea. If we had an AI core on hand, we could analyze the data more quickly. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, everything is like scripted and everything when they do their, their data analysis because nothing is uh, controlled by AI. As, uh, I believe there's a... I believe this faction hates AI or something. I don't remember. <laughs> we'll learn more as we play. We have an AI core in hand. We could analyze the data more quickly. Fortunately, there's a survey probe somewhere in the system. One left over from the initial exploration of the sector by the domain. It should have at least one AI core serving it as its brain. Where is it? And why hasn't anyone salvaged it? To answer your second question, domain artifacts are usually protected by an automated defense that will still function to this day. Probably because it's controlled by an AI. And this pro this 
This probe is no exception, and hegemony generally forbids civilian interfer interferences with domain artifacts for the sake of public safety, of course. Desperate times, however. Yeah, the domain, um... Yeah, something happened with AI and the domain hate it. I don't remember why. We're gonna learn more as we play the game. As to where it is, my data indicates it's somewhere beyond the orbit of Pont Pontus. Get there, then head out beyond the asteroid belt and use the active sensor burst. You should, at, at the very least, get a sensor contact with the probe. Head towards it, form salvage, and bring back an AI core. But this is a gas giant. In the outer system, to see its name on the map, you might have to turn off the inhabited option in the map filter. Oh, good to know. An active sensor burst. I'll see what I can do. Okay. Cool. I need to buy more supplies. Um, I can't buy supplies here because uh, they're way too expensive. I have a bunch of money so I can buy like things here that are like really cheap. This place produces a lot and we can sell to whatever we find. At the moment it looks like everything is like super expensive here. Because I think this is just a research facility. I don't think they actually make anything. I think. I mean, you'll tell me here. Uh, they produce people and drugs or medicine. Do, do, do. Produce people. Do, do. Produce people. Yeah, they produce people and, and medicine. Everything else they, um, uh, they actually consume. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of Star Sector. We have a lot of work to do. We need to get supplies to keep our fleet going. We need to grow our fleet. We need to investigate this AI thing um, so we can learn more about the AI cores and, um, and figure out what exactly we want to do. I think I want my fleet to be cargo and drone focused. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to do to build up and then we might build, um, get some like larger ships as a defense fleet while the, um, uh, drones like do most of the damage. I, I, I really like this idea of having a, a drone fleet. <laughs> so that's probably going to be my focus. But anyways, hope you guys enjoy this. Please leave a like if you did. If you like what I do, consider subscribing and I'll check you guys out in the next video. Until then, this is Captain Soban signing out. The Baker have arrived. Emergency hyperspace procedures initiated. The mothership must survive.